Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me for another episode of my Aston Villa career on FIFA 16. Now brace yourself, a lot is going to be going down in this episode. Lots of comings and goings because the transfer window is open and lots of action in the games that we will go through. We've got some FA Cup action coming up and we continue hopefully our good form in the Premier League. Now, throughout this series so far, I've been ripping into Guzan, my goalkeeper, my number one goalkeeper at the moment, simply because he's conceded so many silly goals which he could have avoided, could have saved, I'm sure. I mean, whenever I've played Aston Villa, let's say on my Manchester United career, and had to uh, come up against Guzan, he's seen like a world-class keeper, but not the other way around. So... I've come to the conclusion now that he will be gone in January. Who I bring in to replace him, I don't know. I put up a, a short list here of a couple of goalkeepers like Silison from Ajax, Sommer from Mönchengladbach, Moya from Atletico Madrid, who I've put in an inquiry for. They don't really want to be getting rid of their keeper in January. And besides, they were looking for something like 13, 15 million, and we just don't have that type of budget in January. As you've already seen, we, we've only got 1.7 mil, never be able to sign him. So I thought Adrian from West Ham would be the next best thing. I know a lot of you guys have been saying, oh, get Jack Butland. And yeah, to be fair, it would be a fantastic signing, but I know a lot of other FIFA YouTubers that go after Butland, and I want to try and make this career mode a bit different from the rest, if you know what I mean. So, Adrian would be my number one target for the January transfer window. Who knows what will happen come the summer if, if I do sign Adrian, and if he doesn't work out for us, then maybe there'll be uh, an opening there for Jack Butland, an offer on the table. We'll just have to wait and see. And we would find out about that deal with uh, West Ham and Adrian after this game at the Stadium of Light in the FA Cup. We found ourselves in the lead. It was Leroy Fur just going to absolutely blitz through this game. There was hardly any highlights. The only highlights were the goals themselves. So Leroy Fur got our nose in front and Scott Sinclair made it 2-0. As soon as we kicked off for the second half, they seriously messed up with the pass. And it was a good interception from Fur, And he kept that ball glued to his feet as he was surrounded by Sunderland players and Scott Sinclair. There were appeals for offside, found himself in a brilliant position and just hit that first time finding the bottom corner. And then with four or five minutes remaining of the game, we wrap things up at the Stadium of Light, making it 3-0 with a goal from Fernandez, the young startlet, the low knee, sliding the ball across the line. Jordan A, who could have easily have pulled the trigger there as Pantillamon came out to meet him, looking to make himself big. And he didn't even see the run made by Edimilson Fernandez. Simple goal, simple win, three goals, three of the very best from Aston Villa. We're in great form at the moment. And this away win just tops that. So we're into the next round of the FA Cup. And you'll be able to find out who we're drawn against a bit later on in this episode. Now, after that game against Sunderland, we got the message from David Gold. Didn't think the offer was good enough. They didn't quite fancy a straight swap for Guzan. They didn't think it was good enough. So I put in an offer pretty much blowing the whole of my uh, January transfer budget. One mil plus Guzan on Adrian. Would we be able to snap him up? Stay tuned. Now, our next game was against Sunderland. We were staying in Sunderland. We were staying up north for this game. Heading into it, we're about halfway through the season now. We're in sixth. What a position to be in. 19 games gone. We've won eight, drawn eight, and only lost three. Fantastic stuff. We're well on course for a Europa League spot. We're level on points with Manchester United. Three behind Everton and Chelsea. And we're just about finding our groove. What a time to hit some form mid-season. We can really make, maybe go for a title charge if we could win again against Sunderland and pretty much replicate the same sort of performance. I did decide to sim this game as I don't want to keep playing the same team over and over. And the game ended 0-0. I did expect better because I did put out a stronger side than I did against Sunderland in the FA Cup fixture just previous. And we, we couldn't even score a goal against them, which was a bit disappointing. So to finish up the month of January, our next three fixtures will see us against Leicester, Crystal Palace and round two of the West Midlands derby against West Brom at the Hawthorns this time around. The previous fixture ending 3-3, six goals scored in total. What a fixture that was. You can see the highlights of that a bit earlier on in this series so far. Now, 
David Gold accepted the one million deal, plus Guzan for Adrian. Really happy about this, well chuffed. But the thing is, I was having a bit of trouble with the uh, the contract. I had to go back and uh, change my budget, just mess around with the budget split so I could get enough wage in there for uh, Adrian. And that will probably be, unless I was to sell someone else in the window, probably be my only signing of January. I think it's a decent one to keep going forwards. Now, I don't think... I really need to strengthen my strikers because Charlie Austin seems to be hitting form now, scoring those goals that we need. Fur in support as well. He's been tremendous since joining in the summer. It was just that uncertainty in goal with Brad Guzan, who was just all over the place in pretty much every game that he started for us. And then, how about this? I received an international management offer to become the England manager. I was so split on this. I was like, shall I accept? Shall I reject? What shall I do? Shall I stall? Maybe wait until I hear your thoughts. But I thought, you know what? We'll save that for a later date. <laughs> and so I decided to reject and just concentrate on on Aston Villa. We're trying to rebuild things here. Can't have my attention going off somewhere else for uh, international duty. And how about this? Adrian decided to accept uh, my my contract offer, but we didn't have the financial means to pull off the contract. So I, it says, would you like this done automatically? And I thought, well, yeah, okay, instead of me having to go back and do it all again with the budget split. And we got the confirmation that the new sign-in will be arriving. He'll be packing his things up and moving up north. And then Joe Cole will be departing the club because I didn't renew his contract. I didn't really see any need in doing so. I don't, I don't see him in my first team plans going forwards over the next couple of seasons. So he'll be leaving on a free come the, uh, the end of the season. And there is the, uh, the transfer confirmation that West Ham have accepted the big offer for Adrian. And he will be joining Aston Villa. Now, the spending spree didn't stop there for West Ham. They came in with an offer for Leroy Fur, who you know has been in excellent form, as you can see there. They put in an offer of 7.5 mil on the table. I counter-offered, if you want him, you're going to have to pay 16.5. I mean, if I am to sell him, I would like to make a bit of a profit off him because I spent like 7.5 on him in the summer after he made his move from QPR. As you can see here with the calendar as well, there has been a reshuffle. The next round of the FA Cup has been drawn. We will be playing Barnsley at home yet again. If you can cast your minds back to one of the first episodes that I did with Villa earlier in the season. We played Barnsley at home in the Capital One Cup though and we got knocked out. They seem to be a bit of a bogey team so we'll be looking to get a bit of revenge, a bit of payback after that loss there. They just about snatched it in, I think it was the 110th minute, went into extra time and everything. It's such a tight game and uh, as I say we'll be looking to get a bit of payback in that one. I then received an offer for Leroy Fur again from Athletic Bilbao though this time. They put in an offer of 8.5 which was certainly a lot better than West Ham's. But again, standing my ground, I'm looking for that profit on Fur, looking for 15.5. We'll see what happens. Obviously I don't want to be getting rid of him as he's been in excellent form as I've already mentioned. As you've already seen linking up with Charlie Austin and just all around settling in perfectly here at Villa Park. Uh, and that's why I was putting in these outrageous counter offers of something like 15, 16.5 because I didn't think teams like West Ham and, and Athletic Bill Bow would come in and say, yeah, we'll match that, we'll go ahead with the deal for January. We'll just have to wait and see. So fingers crossed they don't decide to go ahead and match it. Now continuing on our momentum that we've been picking up in the league lately, we will be at home to Leicester and we took our time scoring the first goal it came in the 78th minute but Leicester they came to Villa Park they did what they set out to do they defended so well there were times as well where they tried to hit us on the counter but we kept our shape we also stood firm and we just about found that opening with that goal from Scott Sinclair just slipping that one past Kasper Schmeichel perfectly you can see that we played Leicester at their own game, hitting them on the counter. Look at Leroy Fur just sprinting past his man and he just works the ball into the box. Finds Jordan Ayo, hits it first time. Good save initially from Kasper Schmeich, but there's, there's no support there for him to clear the danger. And it's Jordan Ayo that puts us 2-0 up, pretty much putting the game to bed. But Leroy Fur simply couldn't rest until he got his name 
on the score sheet. He made it 3-0 with just seconds to go of the game, hitting the ball on the outside of his right foot. And Kasper Schmeichel had well and truly been done over by the Villa forwards in this game. I mean, the ball, look how close that was to hitting the post. Might even have shaved a bit of paint off. But in the end, it was Villa with the win. Three goals, three points as we continue one hell of a fantastic run that we've put together here in the league. The fans sent home happy as we return our attention to our next game once again at Villa Park against Crystal Palace which you'll be able to see in the next episode. Here was the league table after that win against Leicester. We are in fifth in a Europa League spot. Still level on points with Manchester United and we're now two points behind Swansea City. We're certainly closing that gap. Can you just imagine if I was to be able to lift the Premier League trophy come the end of the season with Aston Villa? It'd be, be a bit weird but it'd be one hell of an achievement. Now with the Hammers getting win that Bill Bow were in for Leroy Fur, they came in with a counter offer and said we'll give you 9.5 for Leroy Fur. And before I even bothered with that deal with Leroy Fur, it got me thinking, hold on, Adrian wasn't even available for that game against Leicester which we just played, so where was he? Why is Guzan still with us? He's nowhere to be seen on our reserves. So, what's going on here, guys? And to top it all off, my budget had been depleted. The one million gone. West Ham had certainly screwed me out of this uh, that transfer budget. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going I'm to go search for Adrian. Let's see if he's still on the database. So, you can see Adrian the striker. Luis Adriano. Absolutely no sign of Adrian the goalkeeper. So I thought, well, let's go and have a look at West Ham then. Let's have a look at their whole team. And there he is. He's still with West Ham. What's going on? The Hammers, David Gold, has screwed me out of my one million. Look at my budget. What is going on? We'll be putting in a lawsuit, I think, against West Ham. See you all in the next episode.